Uh, my question has to do with during the judgment time, is there a scriptural basis that someone like Hitler or, you know, someone who's affected, you know, generations of people, even after he's died during the judgment time, would he have any kind of um, added or increase of judgment based on how his ideas were carried on? For you know, years even after his death, is there anything scriptural? Marie, I, I I believe the answer is yes. The Bible talks about some will be beaten with many stripes and some with few. I think it's all going to be cast into outer darkness. It's all torment forever and ever. But it does appear that people who willfully deceive people, willfully were cruel to people, are going to pay a price. And that's why everything is written down in those books that are open. They're at the end of the millennial reign of Christ, and the people will be judged according to their deeds. Now, that's important, because even today in courts, we'll have a court hearing, and this person may be guilty of, of <coughs> you know, a few infractions, but then they may be guilty of murder and other things as well. Well, we know that even in man's frail justice system, we know that that's going to carry, or at least should, carry a harder punishment than somebody that got a parking ticket. And so I do believe that is. But see, the point is, is uh, the Bible says it is the lake of fire. It's where the Antichrist, uh, the devil are that are cast into it. Uh, I don't know how that degrees of punishment work, but the Bible does speak of some type of degree of punishment, some beaten with many, some beaten with you. Your thoughts, John? Well, in Luke chapter 10, you remember that Jesus speaks of comparative punishment there. And Jesus says about a particular village that rejected the gospel. He said, I tell you, it's more bearable on the day for Sodom and Sodom than for that town. He goes on to say about Bethsaida, it's going to be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. Whatever punishment the former residents of Sodom, of Tyre, of Sidon were experiencing in hell, the Galilean towns, it appears, that refused to hear Jesus would experience more. The level of punishment, in other words, seemed to be tied to the amount of light a person rejects. So I, there, there does seem to be some indication of that. Here's what I would say. I, we need to avoid that at all costs. There is a way to steer clear of that punishment, but there does seem to be greater levels, Mike, of, if you would, of, of the punishment that will be experienced. Amen. And so uh, I, I, I think, uh, Marie, at least your, your perception of this is true. Um, it all is going to be hell. It's all a place of torment forever. Um, the idea that the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Seven Adventists, some of these other groups of annihilation is simply not biblical. In fact, we, we find uh, uh, all the way through the Bible, Jesus never said it's annihilation, ever. No, noted that Jesus spoke 11 times in the Gospels about hell. And it isn't a place that just gets annihilated or the people therein. We find the story of the rich man and Lazarus. We find the place in the book of Jude that says they'll be tormented for day and night uh, forever. Uh, you don't find annihilation. This is some some quirky lie that has worked its way in. And um, what I found a lot of times in the cults in general, there's two things they always hold in common. Number one, Jesus is not God. Now, he might be one of the greats, Buddha, Muhammad, Jesus, but he's not God. The Who Jesus Christ is, is always goofed up in these groups. Uh, he's a great teacher. He's one of the greats. Uh, he is a prophet. He was this, he was, I'm Jesus, you're Jesus, we're all Jesuses, you know. Uh, th that's one of the number one things you find is who is Jesus? The Bible says he is God. Matthew chapter one, very clear. It says he shall be called Emmanuel. And then just so somebody couldn't goof it up, the Bible actually tells you in the book of Matthew chapter one, what the word Emmanuel means, which translated, it says in your Bible, God with us. That's who Jesus Christ is. And re-enumerated re many times, whether it's John 8, 59, where J after Jesus said in John 8, 58, Behold, before Abraham was, I am, claiming to be the I am, the God, it says John 8, 59, they picked up stones to stone him. Why? Because claiming to be God was a capital offense. And so very clearly, we find it many places through the scripture 
uh, that Jesus Christ is God. Number two, the cults hold, is there's no literal hell, or it's not an eternal place, or it's a figment of your imagination, or it's so beautiful you'd kill yourself right now to go there. I actually had a missionary tell me that one time. Um, I, I, it, the Bible said it's a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. You know what's interesting in the Bible? A lot of people miss this. Weeping, we know what that is. I believe, believe they were weeping because they missed heaven. I believe they missed the opportunity to have their sins forgiven. Here in this place called hell that's going to burn forever and ever. But it also says a place of gnashing your teeth. You know, you know what gnashing, it isn't because of pain. If you look at the real a, a placement for gnashing your teeth, it is a facial gesture of hatred. Wow, that's weird. See, in those days, they didn't stick a particular finger up at you as you were driving by in your, in your uh, buggy. Uh, they would gnash their teeth at you. They'd, they'd scowl and grind their teeth at you to show their total displeasure with you. Well, the Bible says hell is going to be a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. And nowhere do you find annihilation in the scripture. Two things in common. Jesus is not God and there is no hell, or at least any place of any enduring punishment or that it is punishment at all. So always remember that when you're dealing with a cult, sometimes we'll run into people and they'll go, brother, you know, and they run all this religious ease on you. And it seems, sounds like they're Christians. I sometimes just cut right to the chase and go, who's Jesus? Well, he's one of the greats. Oh, well, then all of a sudden I know that I'm not talking to a born again person. I'm talking to a religious person, but religion doesn't save you. And so that really helps. And then you can begin to ask him, what is hell? And they'll give you all these things. That opens the door to preach the gospel to them saying, listen, the Bible says hell is a real place. Jesus spoke 11 times about it in the gospels. Jesus died on the cross. So none of us would ever have to go there if you put your faith, hope, and trust in him. So it's a great.